Today I want to tell you about a project I recently did with my patrons. We worked with graphite on drafting film. Actually, we worked with the Mars Lumograph pencils. The set contains normal graphite pencils and Lumograph black pencils. The advantage of the black pencils is that they don't shine like graphite pencils. So for the darkest parts, we use the Mars Lumograph black ones. I have a big set, but you don't need them all. To create the full value range, you can use just four pencils. First, we created a value finder with those pencils. This can be helpful to explore these new materials. Then I created a line drawing and the advantage of drafting film is that it is transparent so I can place the line drawing below the drafting film so you can see through the drafting film and that's really easy. You don't have to transfer or something like that. You can just place it underneath the drafting film. And as usual, I started with the eyes. I always like to start with them. I can't stand a drawing without eyes. And well, we used a paper stump to blend things. And that's a nice material too, to use with those, in those projects. Another really must have tool for projects on drafting film is a slice crafts knife. I think they are called a pen cutter and Slice has them in two variations, the green ones and the orange ones. The orange ones uh, are, well, a little more handy because they stay in place. The other one is auto-retractable. Auto so I have a piece of tape placed on my pen cutter, but the orange wasn't available uh, in the Netherlands uh, for many years. It is available now, so that's cool. And another must-have is this tool, the electric eraser. It's a magical thing. And I always use the one with a really tiny point. And um, yeah, I can create all kinds of textures with it. And you can sharpen the electric eraser on a piece of sandpaper. In that way you can create a really really sharp point on the eraser. The drafting film I use is graphics drafting film and I always buy the double sided so there is no front side on that drafting film but sometimes you just need a front and so you can buy a matte one side that's not a problem. Uh, but I like to um, have both sides available so I can draw on the back side if I want to. If I create uh, black and I want to darken it, it's nice that I can turn the paper around and darken it even more by coloring the back side. In this project it was all about the values and of course about textures. If you want to train your values, because you're always staying too light, uh, then this is a cool project to practice. And that's something beginners do. Beginners always stay too light. They are afraid for the darks, I think. And when I look at my old drawings, I can see the same. I always think, when I, when I look at them now, I always think, well, I stay too light. Let's <laughs> take it out of the mat, take it out of the frame and darken some things. But So that's recognizable. If you want to create realism, value is the most important thing, I think. It's not important to use the right color, the exact color or so. Um, there is no color in this project and I think the end result is quite realistic. But the value that means how dark or how light something is, that's realistic. Uh, that's important to create realism. 
to create the 3D effect, to create uh, the illusion of depth. And that's always a tip I give to my students when they think, well, I can't see roundedness or I don't have depth. Well, I give them the tip, compare two things, the reference in a black and white version and your drawing in a black and white version. And most of the times when you place them next to each other, you can see where you're not dark enough or sometimes where you're not light enough, but most of the times it's where your darks are missing. And of course, to create all those nice little textures, uh, you have to layer and you have to use a knife and the eraser and well, a pencil eraser. And by layering, you can get the cool effects. If you want to learn this project, you can join me on my Patreon page. And there are all kinds of lessons there. Every week I create a lesson of an hour and a half and upload it to the Patreon page. And I live stream in the Facebook group and that gives us the opportunity to interact. I teach every project from, from start to finish, so uh, some projects take a few weeks and some projects take a few months. So every week there's a lesson with or graphite or colored pencils or pastels. And sometimes I upload an extra pro project with watercolor or uh, oils or something like that because I like to switch media. I also variate subjects, so sometimes it's wildlife, sometimes it's still life or a portrait. And I think most of my projects are quite realistic. I think that's a thing that belongs to me. I'm really proud at my students and I want to show you some results. This one was made by Ida. And this one was made by Jose, and, and I think they both deserve compliments. I give you all the videos on Patreon in real time, but you can speed them up if you want to. So you can follow me along. For every project I provide you with a materials list and the line drawing and the reference. So it's like taking workshops, I think, but for a quite reasonable price and you can do it on your own pace and in your own place. When you become a patron, you get instant access to all former classes, to all former lessons. So that's cool too. So I would be really happy to meet you there. Anyway, I hope to inspire you to pick up your own pencils and to create something yourself. And like always, if you have questions, don't hesitate to contact me. See you next time and let's color the world.